In 1998, the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame will induct three new members, representing three distinct eras of the sport's history. The categories are Modern, Classic, and Historic. To be eligible for induction in the modern era, an individual must have made significant contributions to the sport and also have been retired from active participation for at least three years. This year's inductee for the modern era is Jim Kropfeld. Jim drove Unlimiteds from 1982 until 1990. He began driving in the Griffin-powered Miss Budweiser at the end of the 1982 season as a replacement for the immortal Dean Chenoweth. The 1983 season was a sign of things to come as Jim and the Miss Bud won four out of nine races and finished a close second to Chip Hanauer in the Atlas Van Lines for national high points. 1984 was even better as Jim and the Budweiser won six races in the first of three national championships. Kropfeld and the Bud returned as national champion in 1986 with the new turbine-powered Miss Budweiser. Nineteen eighty seven started out rocky when the brand new Miss Budweiser blew over during her very first test run. Kropfeld, never one to be down for long, astounded fans and competitors alike by shaking off the accident and coming back to win five races in the nineteen eighty seven national championship. Jim spent most of his career as the driver of the Miss Budweiser but he also spent time behind the wheel of the Miss Renault and the Winston Eagle. He entered 66 races and won 22 of them, earning him fourth place in the ranks of the sport's all-time winningest driver. Jim Kropfeld is best remembered for being an aggressive and skillful driver who was able to give 110% every time he stepped into a race boat. In recognition of his outstanding contributions to the sport of unlimited hydroplane racing, the Hydroplane and Raceboat Museum is proud to induct Jim Kropfeld in the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame. The second category for inductees is the Classic Era. To be eligible for induction in the Classic Era, an individual must have made significant contributions to the sport and also been retired from active participation for at least 25 years. This year's inductee in the Classic Era is Bill O'Mara. One of America's leading hydroplane racing authorities, Bill O'Mara. Hello, sport fans. The 1958 Bill was King TV sports director in the early 50s, and more than any other person, he fueled the hydro hysteria that gripped the Northwest in the 1950s. For those people lucky enough to grow up in Seattle, the sound of Bill's voice was as much a part of the sport as the sound of a Rolls Royce Merlin. All of the great moments in the sport's history were captured by the flickering glow of a black and white TV and Bill's distinctive voice. He's a quarter of the way through the back stretch in his third lap. He's halfway through the back stretch. He's three quarters of the way through the back stretch, and he's moving into the. Oh! Oh! He went completely around. I don't know whether Lou is still in the boat or not. Is, the is he out of the water? He fell out of the water, clear of the water. Can you find him, Al? The slow motion five is in the north turn, making one complete flip. This is his second time around the course. He'll be full up now at the halfway point. At the three-quarter point. Ooh! Oh, geez. Right. The boat took a bad slide to the right. And now the Coast Guard will have to hurry. And the boat is right. So here's the race for the corner. It is U.S. on the outside, and it is Gale on the inside, and next to her is the Miss Whipway. Now, who will be first through that corner? Muncie was a little slow getting his boat speed, but he had that inside corner where he wanted to be. Now, let's see how they go through that corner for the first time. The gun is going off. Carl Rape is coming down here to the 1,000-foot line. The race has been stopped down, and we'll have to check. Here is the screen. Here is the boat. Here is the boat. And where is Bill? A Coast Guard boat coming out of it. And a Coast Guard man climbing out of the crash. We're waiting now to hear a report from down at the scene. 
Here you see a skin diver going down, going into the Coast Guard cutter. The race has been stopped down. And we understand they haven't found Muncie yet. And there goes the Coast Guard boat. The Coast Guard. The Coast Guard boat has gone down. So another race is in the record book, the 13th annual Silver Cup. In honor of Bill O'Mara's outstanding achievements in promoting the sport of hydroplane racing, the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is proud to induct Bill O'Mara into the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame. On behalf of all of our crew, Tom Lally on camera, Ted Simpson on camera, Lee Showman, our producer, this is yours truly, Bill O'Mara, thanking all the officials for the Silver Cup, for the wonderful help that they have given us in this coverage of the 13th Annual Silver Cup. Good night, everyone. The historic category of the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame is reserved for individuals who have made significant contributions to the sport but were not honored with induction into the Hall of Fame during their lifetime. This year's historic inductee is Steve Woomer. As an owner, Steve Woomer began racing unlimited hydroplanes in 1984 with the Tosti Osti, driven by Steve Reynolds. Over the next 14 seasons, Steve Woomer campaigned a number of different boats, introduced boat racing to several new sponsors like 7-Eleven, Cellular One, and R.J. Reynolds. He donated money to shore up troubled race sites, he lent his hand to startup teams, and he also won a great many races. With a total of 15 career wins, Woomer was ranked second among active owners for total victories. Without a doubt, the highlight of his career was 1994 Gold Cup when Woomer's Smokin' Joe Camel won the team's second Gold Cup. Woomer was preparing for the 1998 season with an all-out commitment to excellence. Many people expected 1998 to be Steve's year. Unfortunately, it was not to be. Felled by a heart attack, Steve Woomer would not live to see the 1998 season. He will be sorely missed, not just as a team owner, but because he was a tireless promoter of boat racing. He used his uncanny business acumen, his tenacious dedication to deeply influence every aspect of the sport that he loved so much. For his accomplishments on and off the race course, the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is proud to induct Steve Woomer into the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame. In 1999, the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame will induct three new members into three different categories. The categories are Historic, Classic, and Modern. To be eligible for the Historic Division of the Hall of Fame, an individual must have made significant contributions to the sport of unlimited hydroplane racing, but not have been honored with induction during his lifetime. This year's inductee into the Historic category is Bill Brow. Bill was a major force in unlimited racing in the mid-1960s. He was also a milkman for Vitamilk Dairy, and after his racing career catapulted him into the limelight, he became known as the world's fastest milkman. He began racing unlimiteds in 1958 behind the wheel of the first Miss Burian. After the Burian was destroyed in an accident, Bill switched to the Miss Bardall in late 1959. His best finish with the Green Dragon was a third place in Madison. Bill sat out the 1960 and 61 unlimited seasons, directing his racing efforts toward his 7-liter hydro, Miss Vitamilk. In 1962, Bill briefly drove the Miss Seattle and Seattle II before landing the ride in 1963 that would make him famous. The second Miss Exide, rushed into service after the first Miss Exide crashed, was one of the fastest boats on the circuit. With Brow driving, the Exide won two of the last three races in 1963. Brow and the Exide continued their winning ways in 1964 and 65 with back-to-back -back wins at the Diamond Cup in Coeur d'Alene. 
At the Gold Cup in Seattle, Brow and the X-Side stunned the racing community by qualifying at a world's record pace of 120.356 miles per hour. In 1966, Bill and the entire Exide team went to work for Bernie Little and Budweiser Racing. After a difficult start to the 1966 season, Bill handed Bernie Little his first victory at the Tri-Cities Atomic Cup, following it up a month later with a second victory in San Diego. 1967 looked like it was going to be a great year for Bill and the Miss Budweiser but a tragic accident at the start of the first lap of the first heat of 1967 ended Bill's life. Bill left a racing legacy that is still impacting the sport. For many years after Bill's death, his family continued to award the Bill Brow Memorial Trophy to the fastest qualifier in Seattle. His two sons, Jack and Doug, followed in their father's footsteps and both became accomplished racers in their own right. In honor of Bill Brow's outstanding contributions to the sport of unlimited hydroplane racing, the Unlimited Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is proud to induct Bill Brow into the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame. The classic category of the Hall of Fame is intended to honor individuals who have made an important contribution to the sport of unlimited racing and have been retired from active participation for at least 20 years. This year's inductee into the historic category is George Henley. George Henley, affectionately called a Smiling George by his many fans, is a kind and gentle man who was as well known for his easygoing, humble ways off the race course as he was for his hard-charging, aggressive driving on the course. George was a successful limited driver who moved up to the Unlimiteds when he signed on to drive Bob Murphy's Burian Lady in 1970. George surprised fans and racers alike when he drove the aging Burian Lady to an astonishing second place in Seattle Seafair Race. George struggled with a couple of experimental cab overs from 71 through 73, driving both the Red Man 2 and the Lincoln Thrift 7.25% Special. George saw moments of brilliance, but ill-handling, underfunded boats kept him from entering the winner's circle. In 1974, George began to drive for Dave Herensberger and the exceptional Pay and Pack team. From their very first race, Henley and the Pay and Pack proved to be a formidable combination. George and the Pack won the first two heats they entered, only to fall victim to a mechanical failure in the final. At the next race, everything came together for George and the Pack, and they won the President's Cup. As the season progressed, things just kept getting better. They set new records almost every week and won six other races, including the Gold Cup. The year ended with a national championship for George Henley and the Pay and Pack. George shocked the hydroplane world when he announced that he was retiring and would miss the 1975 season. The once invincible Pay and Pack floundered through several dismal performances in the first half of 75. Finally, Herensberger persuaded George to come out of retirement. He picked up right where he left off the year before and guided the pack to four straight victories, a second Gold Cup, and a national championship. Again, George stunned the racing community when he announced his retirement. This time, the retirement took, and George never raced in the unlimited class again. During an incredible two seasons with the pay-in pack, George won 13 out of a total of 18 races that he entered. This ranks as one of the greatest driving achievements in the history of the sport. George is remembered as a highly professional driver who was able to get the most out of his equipment without being reckless or dangerous. Even when you consider all of George's amazing racing achievements, he may be best remembered for his true love of the sport and the absolute joy he showed in winning. For his tremendous accomplishments as a driver, the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is proud to induct George Henley into the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame. The modern category of the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame is reserved for individuals who have made significant contributions to the sport and have been retired from active participation for at least three years. This year's modern inductee is Fran Muncy. Fran Muncy's introduction to Unlimited Racing came as a tour guide in San Diego. She met, fell in love with, and married Bill Muncy, the winningest driver in the history of the sport. For many years, Fran attended races in support of her husband. But in 1976, she and Bill became partners in Muncie Racing, 
when she and Bill bought out the entire inventory of Dave Herensberger's Pay and Pack race team. The Muncies were very successful, dominating the sports for several years with the legendary Blue Blaster Atlas Van Lines. In 1981, Bill Muncie was killed while leading the final heat of the World Championship in Acapulco, Mexico. After enduring such a devastating loss, many people would have been tempted to turn their backs on racing. But Fran decided to honor Bill's memory by keeping the team going. She ordered a new boat from Jim Lucero, hired Chip Hanauer to drive, and returned to racing in a big way. The new Atlas debuted only eight months after the tragedy in Acapulco. The boat took some getting used to, but by the Gold Cup, Chip and the team had everything dialed in. The new Atlas and the mighty Griffin Bud battled deck to deck for lap after lap until finally Chip pulled ahead for good. It was a fitting tribute to Bill. Fran and Chip won their first Gold Cup, but in an unbelievable string of victories, Chip and Fran would win seven Gold Cups in a row. The team would also win four national championships. Equally as important as winning races, Fran was successful in bringing the turbine engine from an interesting novelty to a first-class racing engine. Her team ran the first turbine boat to win the Gold Cup, and also the first turbine team to win the national championship. Not only was Fran a major innovator on the course, she also brought two major sponsors to the sport in Miller Brewing and Circus Circus. In honor of all of Fran Muncy's many accomplishments on and off the race course, the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is proud to induct Fran Muncy into the Unlimited Hydroplane Hall of Fame.